Right, I'm Matthew Henson and this is my PowerPoint on how to work ethically and legally on research projects geared specifically towards sport projects. Right, firstly on this slide I will try to explain the difference between working ethically and working legally. Ethically is more right and wrong and is determined by people's moral principles. Obviously because this is something that each individual will determine for themselves there can be some grey area as to what actually is ethical or not. To get around this there's an ethics committee which each scientist will have to submit their planned research project to and the committee will then look at it and say whether they think it should be approved or not. If it's not then the scientists obviously can't do that bit of research in the way they want to. An example of an ethics committee is BASES which is a sport specific ethics committee and they will receive sport scientists uh, proposals and they will say whether or not they will endorse the scientists to do it. Legally it's much more straightforward it's just simply working within the law of the country region, country or region you're in and obviously that will be up, decided upon by the government and upheld by the police. <coughs> there are cases of where something can be ethical but isn't necessarily legal. For instance, the Lombardo prison experiment didn't break any laws, however it did raise some questions as to if it was ethical or not because of the way it was conducted. Right, on this slide, a nice little way of remembering how to work ethically and legally is you just have to follow what these five things drip. So D is deception. This means the scientists cannot deceive their clientele in any way. They cannot tell the person they're doing research on that they're doing something other than what they were. So e.g. Milgram's shock experiment, again it's not a specific sport example but it's a good one. Milgram's shock experiment, he deceived the people he was doing the research on in several ways. He, he made them think they were causing someone else harm with electric shocks and he told them he was researching something other to what he was. Obviously this wasn't very ethical and it did cause some psychological harm to the participants. R is right to withdraw. Now this means that every single person can, in an experiment has the right to withdraw both themselves and their results from the proceedings at any time if they want to. The test subject doesn't necessarily have to withdraw their results if they withdraw themselves. They might say no you can still use my results, I just don't want to be a part of this anymore. They might say no you can't use my results and obviously if they say that then you have to respect their wishes. I stands for informed consent. This means that when conducting research you have to have informed your proposed test subject of everything that will be expected of them so that they can make proper consent. Obviously if you're dealing with children then the consent has to be made with parents present and you will need consent from both the child and the adult. It might not necessarily be a parent, it might be a carer, but you need consent. P is protection from harm. Now this is both psychological and physical so you cannot allow your subject to cause any or be, have any harm caused to them, either mentally or physically. Again, this was broken in Milgram shock experiment because the test subjects were psychologically harmed because they thought they could hear screams that they were causing other people to experience. And P is privacy. This is this means that no names can be published. So you can use results, but you can use results as a group. So you can't use specific names in the experiment. And this is just another way of remembering some other ways of working ethically and legally and it's the four C's. First being competence. As a scientist you cannot do any bit of research you are not trained to do because that will not be safe. Which means you'll need someone else to come in and do that area for you. C is consent. This is the same as informed consent. You cannot do anything to any subject that they have not agreed to and said you can. C is confidentiality. 
this is same as privacy on drip in that all results must be kept confidential and there must be no name present the last is conduct this means that the, as a researcher you must keep a professional manner at all times and not go over the boundaries as to what is acceptable as a researcher right this is bases which is what I mentioned in the first slide which is the British Association of Sport and Exercise Science they will have a code of conduct that they expect any research any sport and exercise scientist that want bases to back them and accredit them research and fund their research to follow and obviously if this is not followed then bases will not endorse that bit of research right now this side is what can happen if you don't work ethically and legally and obviously the punishments do fit the crime so the more severe you've broken it the more severe your punishment obviously for minor uh, discrepancies it's stuff like loss of support so that would be loss of support from people such as bases and that includes a whole range of support that is loss of money you won't get the facilities they won't back you publicly and that can basically end your career as a researcher because if you have no money you have nowhere to do the tests and you have no one backing your tests your career is over you have no nothing to do unless you can get that back somehow then you have loss of accreditation now this can mean that the bit of research you've done becomes pointless no no one will credit that research to you you won't know you won't be known with it and obviously again that's not very good for your career and then you, you get fined now this fine will depend on how severe you broke the law or unethically depending on how what you have done so obviously like I said the amount you get fined depends on the severity of your action and the last one is prison this is will be quite un uncommon but it is the most severe and it is the big one right on the next five slides I have a list of scenarios and through them I will try to explain how in them situations a researcher can act ethically and what will happen if they don't so in this you can see as a researcher you're trying to see female gymnasts who have been gymnasts longer build up less blood lactate than those who have been gymnasts for a shorter amount of time I should clarify we are talking about young female gymnasts in all five scenarios even if it's not specifically mentioned right obviously as they are young you need the consent to be from an adult you need an adult's permission and you need theirs and they're females that creates an issue if you're a male researcher it will be a good idea obviously to have someone in a room with you that can testify to your actions have been kept professional and you've kept good conduct and obviously if any of them you haven't it's not a clear scenario because you haven't told them how you're going to test their blood lactate um, so obviously they might say yeah you can do it then find out that involves a needle and not want to and if they do that you have to allow them to withdraw also with it being blood lactate you have to be competent enough to take them tests it's no good just saying yeah I'm going to do it and then stick, in it, stick the mach machine in them and try and work out what's going on from there you have to know what you're doing beforehand obviously depending on how you break them depend depending on which one of these you maybe haven't done will depend on the severity of your punishment e.g. if you haven't got a consent then you're looking at depending on you're looking at possible fines and possibly a short prison sentence you'll definitely lose support and you'll be lucky to get accredited with anything again so obviously you get that side of your career over if you're talking you weren't very professional with him, you made some inappropriate comments maybe then you're possibly looking at a small fine and maybe loss of accreditation so like I say the punishment does fit the crime second scenario as a researcher trying to determine if punishment and failure will improve a young gymnast or a routine again young gymnasts you need consent of both them and adults if you don't have it that is illegal this is quite again it's quite an unclear scenario you haven't uh, the researcher hasn't specifically said what how they will punish the gymnast because a punishment can go from anything to a telling off to physical abuse 
obviously physical abuse is illegal so it is safe to assume it won't be that however you haven't said if you're going to punish them physically by do, giving them a forfeit say press ups you just don't know which means you have to be more clear with this and you have to be more specific so that an informed consent can be made again young gymnasts you need to make sure you remain professional and that you keep your conduct, conduct as such <clears throat> you also need to be competent at judging a gymnast scoring routine if you can't tell what's good and what's not you might be punishing the wrong thing so if you uh, it's unlikely that a scientist will know the gymnastic how to score a gymnastics routine so they will need to get someone in who can do Right, the third scenario, which is as a researcher you want to see if old gymnasts are more likely to keep working through fatigue than younger gymnasts. Again, this scenario is quite vague. How are you going to test that they're dealing with fatigue better? How are you planning on fatiguing them? So, these kind of things would need to be clarified so an informed consent is made because testing on them without an informed consent is, like I said, illegal and could result in, depending on how far you go, a fine and prison sentence. Now, you're working with older and younger gymnasts here, so it's a good idea to, with your professional conduct, to not get to, to see them all as kind of one group, so you keep them the same, because you don't want to overstep any boundaries with the older lot or the younger, so you need to try and keep all of them, both the older gymnast and the young gymnast, view them as clients in your eyes, even the older ones. Right, you also have to allow them to withdraw. If you're fatiguing them and they decide that they don't want to do it anymore because it's too much, you have to let them stop. If one of them may be embarrassed by their results, they think that they fatigue too quickly, you again have to let them withdraw them. Failure to do so could, like I say, loss of support and possibly a small prison sentence, uh, a fine, depending on how badly you do. Right, the fourth and penultimate scenario is as a researcher, you're trying to find out if gymnasts who smoke are unable to keep up with the physical intensity of those who don't. This could be quite an embarrassment for some female, for some of the gymnasts, if they're not as physically capable as others. So you have to keep everything private and confidential because they won't want other people to know. You also have to find gymnasts who do smoke that you can compare with gymnasts who don't because you can't make gymnasts smoke because that will cause physical harm and if you do cause physical harm it, like, it could be a prison sentence or a fine most likely. Again consent needs to be made by them which means you need to be clearer as to how physical intent you expect it to get. The last scenario is that you're looking at the influence of BMI on a young female gymnast. Again, this can be quite an embarrassment if they've got a high BMI. So again, you have to keep it private and confidential. Failure to do so, you're looking at loss of accreditation and possibly a fine, depending on how badly you've done it. You also, it's a female gymnast, you need to remain professional while doing it, not make any comments about their weight or BMI category. Um, doing that again, loss of accreditation and or support. You can't deceive them, you need to tell them exactly how you take BMI, so they need to know that it's done height and weight. And obviously if one of the gymnasts sees their BMI, because I don't want this to be included, I want to pull out, you have to let them. Right, so that is my PowerPoint, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, thanks.